Ladies and gentlemen, stunning scenes from the Queen Victoria markets in Melbourne where police were sent in, according to the report, to deal with one or two coronavirus protesters, but then summarily proceeded to push everyone out of the market. These are scenes literally from dystopic movies like Soylent Green, where the scoops were sent in to push people away as they were trying just to get food for their families. What is going on in Australia? <laughs> and this is not the only example. There are other farmers markets where police were sent in and patrolling and people were pretty al alarmed by this, not understanding why a police presence is suddenly required at a neighborhood farmers market. And there were no protesters there. Why are police suddenly being sent and using force at places where food is available in Australia? I would suggest that it has something to do with this report, and many like it. Warning, Australia is running out of rice, and may be completely out by Christmas. And furthermore, they're shutting down the beef industry right now at the same time. Australia is a bellwether for the rest of the world as we watch our crops devastated by the grand solar minimum and exacerbated by a deliberate destruction of our food supply in order to take total control. Let's talk about that. I'm Christian, and this is the Ice Age Farmer broadcast. Australia is facing a rice shortage, with growing concerns the country could run out of local supplies before Christmas. Political reporter Olivia Leeming is in Canberra. What's triggered the crisis, Olivia? Well, now, the combination of factors, according to one of Australia's largest rice exporters, it's warned that while there will still be imported rice products on our supermarket shelves by the end of the year, none of it will be Australian grown. The head of Sunrise says the drought and the way that water is allocated to farmers have led to one of the smallest rice crops this year in Australia's history. Earlier this year, the Prime Minister had to ring the President of Vietnam to ensure that Australia could still import rice from an Australian-owned factory over there after it banned rice exports to shore up local supplies. Yes, Australia running out of rice. We may be completely out by Christmas, and that's why the PM was on the phone with Vietnam earlier this year, making sure that even as they announced an export ban, because they needed to make sure that Vietnam could feed their own people, so we're going to just stop exporting, even though we're the number one producer in the world. We're just going to stop exporting. And this is what we've been expecting as the conditions get worse and worse, as food shortages become more acute. Countries just stop. They just renege on their agreements. They declare force majeure or just don't even do it. Whatever it is, they say, we're not going to export you our food anymore because we got to feed our own people. This is what the UN or the food chain reaction game call pesky protectionist nationalist policies in the face of a global crisis. But it's a natural thing. And so when we see Australia saying, we're totally out of rice, we have nothing, we're now going to depend on imports from Vietnam and from other places. Just like two years ago, when there was a drought in Germany, they slid from a net exporter of grains to a net importer. They now depend on the rest of the world to feed them. And more and more of the world is sliding into this state of dependency on international trade. You know, this, this is not a sustainable situation. Now, we could have predicted this. In fact, we did talk about this. We could have predicted this problem with Australian rice due to the fact that the water allocations there have been so poorly managed. The government made a policy of putting priority to the most valuable crops, which meant that cotton got water instead of rice. And so this has been a situation building for years now. In last year, 2019, they had a very small rice crop due, again, because of the allocations. It is true that there are changing precipitative patterns due to the solar minimum. And then, again, it's this problem-reaction famine where the state intervenes and makes things worse. They're engineering food shortages right now. And so 
Uh, that's why this year, because of this terrible mismanagement of their water supplies, the rice farmers in Australia said, screw it. It's impossible to grow here without water. We're not even going to plant 90% of the Australian rice growers neglected to even plant the grain this year. So of course they have a really low crop this year. Um, even though it has just started to rain, thank goodness, now they're expecting a little bit of a bounce on some of their other grains, but it's too late for rice right now. Uh, they're now wholly dependent and expected to run out by Christmas of Australian grown grains. As I mentioned, they're also shutting down their beef production this release from JBS this week about a permanent reduction in their workforce at their largest beef plant, processing plant in Australia. Formerly, the plant ran two shifts a day and then shut down during the pandemic because of outbreaks. Uh, but now they've been slowly trying to spin back up. They were staggering shifts for a bit. At this point, now they've decided to permanently lay off 600 people um, that was the entire second shift. We read here, the plant's second shift has now been completely discontinued. We're now going to run the plant on a single shift five days a week. That means we're getting half as much done, half as much production out of this meat plant. Of course, they blame changes in the market conditions due to COVID-19 and even a reduced livestock supply, all of which is true. But the bottom line is that as we're seeing throughout the world, meat factories are being shut down and uh, this is causing tremendous and lasting impact on the production of protein. But that's all right, because more and more we're just seeing, as this new report from PBS says, we'll just turn our trash into food, this upcycled food. We'll use the insect-based protein that the UN has been pushing for years, and this new upcycled food making trash into food. That's how we're going to feed you going forward, because it's not going to be vegetables and fruits at farmers' markets anymore. No, please are going to be there. And it is, uh, you know, this is really telling, ladies and gentlemen, when you are expecting to enter food shortages and lasting impacts to your food supply, you need to slowly get people used to the appearance of police at food distribution points. And that's why they're appearing at farmers markets right now without reason. It's because the reason is in the future. This is, this is setting the stage for what they know is coming. They are preparing. And so too must you start growing food today, start putting it aside, saving seeds, telling more than anything, telling people around you that this is coming because folks, it's getting ugly rapidly and Australia offers us a glimpse, weeks, months perhaps into the future, but everything we're seeing there is rapidly coming here. Please just running over and beating people in the streets because we need to get these people in line. We need to get them used to the fact that force will be used going forward. Um, particularly at farmers markets and grocery stores. When people go hungry, we lose the order in the streets. And for that, we need to brace with increased police presence. We're seeing that now. Ladies and gentlemen, you can find this report and all my reports on iceagefarmer.com. If you appreciate this broadcast and the information I bring you, you can support this work. Visit iceagefarmer.com slash support for a few ways of doing so, including patreon.com slash iceagefarmer, maybe the easiest. But I chiefly, I thank you for helping me spread the word about this. All right, folks, let's go build great things, grow abundant, nutritive food, and raise awesome animals. Be well. Hi everyone, it's Michelle here from Our Free Society. I decided to do an audio instead of doing my usual slides. I know you probably may want to hear from me more vocally, but um, I get very anal about these things. I just wanted to say some things before I show you the video from the Ice Age Farmer uh, because I want to make clear what I believe and I don't think people are reading my notes in the description. I always write notes about each uh, video and what I think about it. Um, sometimes I put slides in, but most times it's my content uh, comments are in the notes. Anyway, I don't believe in the Grand Solar Minimum. He's been talking about this for several years. Um, 
I believe, I don't believe in climate change anymore, and I used to be a diehard climate change uh, believer before I woke up to the truth that it's the evils that are doing this using their weapons. They have weather weapons. They've had weather weapons now since approximately the mid to late 40s. So all of these weather anomalies and catastrophes that you see all over the world and have been seeing all over the world for years is due to um, the evils doing this on purpose. And as far as droughts and stuff like this, they can do the same thing. They can stop rain. They can make huge storms of rain. It's really quite disconcerting what they can do. Not to mention their spraying of chemtrails, which includes uh, several chemicals, uh, and most notably aluminum, which is uh, known to cause Alzheimer's and um, would also help 5G to track you. I, I can't remember if it's the nanos or uh, it's just the 5G in general. So I don't believe in grand solar minimum. Of course, I don't really know that much about it, but since I don't believe in climate change, I don't believe in the grand solar minimum. Yes, there are cyclical events that happen in the world. But there's no way that we can prove one way or another because of what the evils are doing. So long as they're screwing around with the weather, and they have been for so long, we don't know what's natural and what they're doing anymore. We just don't. And they've been trying to kill off the sun as well. And I'm sure that the sun is trying to fight back because that's what nature does. It tries to fight back. So if the sun's fighting back we don't again we don't know what is what they're doing and what the sun you know is doing plus they're trying to get rid of the film I can't remember what it's called I apologize that protects you from radiation from the sun um, and I believe that this is probably also why they're they've built these uh, I don't want to call them bunkers because that makes it sound very rustic I've heard that they've built many um, luxurious, uh, I don't know if they're cities per se, but homes, mansions underneath the ground. Why would they be building that if everything's going to be okay above ground? Um, I won't go into the, the history of cities underground now because that's irrelevant right now, but um, I've heard of that as well. So, um, I don't believe in the grand solar minimum. It's very obvious to me. I just want to make this clear because he was sort of making it clear, but maybe not as clear as I would like, that it's obvious that they, um, you know, brought the cops in to harass these people. They do not want people buying fresh food. They're trying to get them to steer away from the fresh food. The insects part that he talks about at the end, that was already discussed in Celeste's video. I hope that you've watched it. Um, it's disgusting to me. I knew about this, that they were going to force us to eat insects and lab created food all the way back in, I think it was April, I uploaded that video. So, uh, you know, I don't know what to say. I myself am not growing anything. I'm not in any situation where I can. I don't have any land. I live in an apartment. I can't do this manual labor myself. I hope that you guys are doing uh, something for yourself and that you're gathering around with other people to create uh, gardens and micro farms. And you're splitting the work, getting real seeds, not the toxic GMO seeds. Honestly, I'm not trying to, to, you know, talk about fear porn here, but even if you do all that, they can come in and just take it away from you. And this is why I, so, I keep talking about we need rid of government because this is the only way potentially to solve our problem. You know, people talk about, other truthers talk about, okay, just get up and walk away okay so we walk away but then they use their drones to go find people who have gardens and micro farms or even just small farms and they go and they attack them they can attack them with the weather 
weapons that they have, bring in the cops, bring in the military. I mean, these cops and the military, I believe, are brain mind controlled. That's what I believe. I'm not saying that they all are. I'm sure that some are just psychopaths to begin with and they'd be more than happy to harm and kill any human being because they have a bloodthirst. But the other ones, I'm pretty sure, are... And also people who go along with the crowd. This is the thing. This is what... The whole thing is... It's a com... It's, I don't even want to call it communism because as someone pointed out in another video uh yesterday i'll be uploading that soon actually was mark passio um the evils will use any type of government system that there is to create uh tyranny and to control you so it doesn't matter D democracy is bullshit. communism we already know what people think about that socialism you know same thing i'm all for community and us working together i'm a hundred percent for that by the way but i'm also for free market so you know there has to be something in between my point is that they will come after you no matter what kind of uh, air quotes government is in power and that is the ultimate problem the evils control the government and the government controls us and has for eternity and just because you don't have the imagination to think of how it would work and how would we stop people from um, you know robbing us and attacking us I mean if that's the only thing that you're scared of people already rob and attack and kill people and we have government so that you know just doesn't even make logical sense to me People are like this because of government, because of the evils and what they have done. You have to get out of that brainwashed mindset and you, ha you know, that you have to have government. Otherwise, there's going to be chaos. We have, look, look at it, it's a police state. Australia was never a police state. The U.S. was never really a police state. I mean, let's be honest. Yes, they were always a police state, but they were on the down low because the evils weren't ready to enact what they're doing now. Now they're ready and they've now you can see it. It's obvious. But if you were awake enough before and you were aware of your surroundings before and you actually believed in freedom and you felt freedom inside yourself, you would have known that no, even before you couldn't do anything without the permission of government and the stranglehold just became worse and worse and worse look how many laws they put on the books you don't need that many laws you need just a few laws you know the laws of nature don't do harm to someone else doesn't matter what it is stealing uh attacking raping my body whatever killing that's it that's all the laws that you need you don't need 20 million other laws when you have that many laws, you know that you're in a prison system. This is all I wanted to say. I don't want to go on and on because I could go on forever and I don't do, you know, take up your day. But what's happening in Australia? It is going to happen to a country near you. I don't care where you are now. This is what's going to happen. Why they're going after Australia and think that they're just going to be able to do it so easily to, to Aussies, I don't. Um, if you know the history of how Australia even got created, it was a very interesting movie I saw many, many years ago. It, basically, all of the criminals, and I say that loosely in air quotes, because, you know, what they call a criminal, I wouldn't necessarily call a criminal. Um, they sent them and shipped them off to Australia, and that's how they created Australia. So Australia was originally... A penal colony and I don't know if that's why they think that they can do all this anyway I hope you're okay please try to keep strong really people who say to me what can we do and then just shrug their shoulders I mean you might as well just give up now and go bury yourself and not even watch any other videos because you've already given up I'm not going to give up until I'm dead 
Sorry, I have to add one more thing about the rice because I remembered that afterwards. Yes, he said that last year they were talking about the rice and all of that and how all of a sudden, you know, people are not exporting outside their country. Vietnam has to decide, you know, to take care of their, their citizens first. In my opinion, it's all bullshit, okay? Um, it was all pre-planned. I mean, remember, they've been planning this tyranny, this Holocaust, this war for about uh, 70 years, which was approximately how long they planned 9-11 before they enacted 9-11. So uh, I believe that they just, they either paid off government in uh, Vietnam or Germany and by the way lots of the more I study and the more I learn a lot of the evils originally come from Germany I think um, well I didn't mention it to you guys but I mentioned it to someone else the other day that I'm not talking about regular German people I'm talking about the Nazis that never left. They, Nazism never left. It, it didn't get eradicated. It just got buried and covered up by the U.S., uh, by the British, and whoever else. Uh, you know, the evil's at the top of the ladder. So I believe that they just started this whole cycle where you weren't going to export and all of this. I didn't know about this. And this is the problem. People don't know where their food comes from. And that's why I say, yes, you might be more comfortable in front of a computer, working a desk job, etc., etc., because that's what we're used to. We're not used to doing the farming unless we came from a farming family. But there's a lot of people who have quit their job and gone off to learn how to farm. And you have to do it now. I mean, it's already too late now because we're in a war. But if you're going to do it, you got to start to do it now. Even if they take your farm away, um, at least you tried. At least you know in your heart that you tried rather than doing absolutely nothing, living in fear. And I know that it's really, really hard not to live in fear, especially if you're even 50% woke awoken to what is going on but we have to fight back in any way that we can and this is one way to do that is by creating our own food raising our own livestock learning how to do all the things that our generations previously knew how to do no problem and of course to do it better without chemicals without pesticides and you know to try to clean the the earth and make it nutrient dense um, I have added some extra um, links to things on my we deserve health .com site I don't know if people go on there I do not post on there really anymore because I'm too much on the other I'm just too much work on the our free society .com site but it's there there's you know, I just uploaded um, a company that delivers organic for a, a relatively cheap price, you know, just $22, $22 a week for a box of organic. Of course, it's a smaller box. Um, it's not perfect looking organic. It's kind of the type of organic, you know, vegetables that they throw away, but you get it for a cheaper price and at least it's organic. I still believe that you need to grow your own because you have no idea what these organic farms are doing themselves unless you go and you don't want uh, industrial organic farming. You absolutely do not want that. If you're near a farm, you know, even if it's an hour drive away and you've checked them out, you find out what kind of water they use to irrigate, what they're using for fertilizer, if they can even prove to you that their soil has nutrients in it, you would see lots of worms if it was nutrient dense. Most of these organic farms, the organic produce that I've tasted, tastes no different to me than the toxic garbage 
with pesticides and that tells me also that they're picking it before it's ripe you cannot be eating produce before it's ripe this is rule uh, eating properly 101 this is the reason why you're not getting nutrients even if the 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 soil was nutrient dense but then they pick the produce early you know because they're afraid it's going to get squished in transit it's useless to you it's useless not only is it not going to taste good it's not going to have the nutrients that your body needs remember food is medicine and people don't know that and if you don't please start to research this one of the reasons why sorry that's my phone one of the apps going off um one you know this is how we have to learn how to heal our our bodies part of the re, part of the way not the only way but it's a big huge part of it is eating proper healthy food which we have not had access to because the evils have been poisoning us for so long okay so this is the end of this one thank you have a great day night wherever you are in the world my heart goes out to you and i'll continue doing what i do